Anyway, I love Taylor Dane, and not ironically, I love her. So I went back into the party, and I went up to her, and I said, excuse me, I'm sorry to bother you, but I just have to tell you, I love your voice. And she just turned and said, yeah, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> and I looked over, and this other friend of mine was doubled over laughing at me. She's like, yeah, you just got dissed by Taylor Dan. And it felt horrible. So I left the party. Then like nine months passed. And I happened to be out to eat with that same friend of mine, Pam. There was a party of ten that was seated right behind us. You guys are not going to believe who was sitting there. <laughs> yeah, it was Taylor Dan. It's exactly who it was. Pam said, oh my gosh, you have to say something to her. And I said, no question. Because I still love Taylor Dan. But I didn't know what to say to her. And then I realized the best thing that I could say to Taylor Dane would be the exact same sentence that I said to her the first time. So I turned around and I interrupted her entire dinner. And I said, excuse me, I'm sorry to bother you, but I just have to tell you, I love your voice. And she said, My speaking voice? <laughs> and I said, Yes. <laughs> I was sitting here with my friend. I heard someone talking behind me. I said, I need to turn around and compliment this person on their speaking voice. <laughs> And what I didn't realize at the time was that Taylor Dane was no longer pursuing a singing career. She was pursuing an acting career, which I guess is why she was no longer accepting compliments <laughs> on her singing voice. And then about a year passed. And at this point, I've told all of my friends about my run-ins with Taylor Dane and how she's the easiest person in the world to run into. <laughs> so I was at my writing partner at Kyle's house, and my phone rang, and it was Sarah Silverman. And at the time, Sarah was dating Jimmy Kimmel. Sarah called and said, guess who's promoting a CD on Jimmy's show tomorrow night? You guys will not believe who it was. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> it was Taylor Day. So Sarah called. <laughs> said, I want you to come down to Jimmy's show tomorrow night, and I want you to say those exact <laughs> same words that you said the other times. And I said, no question. <laughs> but I didn't end up having to go to Jimmy's show the next night, because that same day, don't shake your head at me. That same day that Sarah called me at Kyle's house, Kyle and I took a lunch break and we ordered lunch to be picked up. We walked across the street to the strip mall where the restaurant was. Kyle was walking in front of me, I was walking behind him. He walked up to the restaurant, he opened the door. He looked at this table then he looked back at me. Then he looked back at the table. And I was like, 
yeah, 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 of course she's here. <laughs> then Kyle and I walked over to the counter where our food was going to be waiting for us, and I was just pacing back and forth, about to have a stroke. And I was like, what is your problem? And he said, nothing, I'm just really uncomfortable right now. And I said, why? And he said, because I know what's about to happen. <laughs> and I said, yeah. And I can't wait to do it. I said, this has nothing to do with you. I said, this is between me and Taylor Dane. I said, but what I do need you to do, when I go up to her lunch table, I want you to just take my cell phone and just point it in the general vicinity. Just, just videotape me talking to Taylor Dane. So I finally have proof. And he was like, okay. So I walked up to Taylor Dane's lunch table. And I said, excuse me. I'm sorry to bother you. But I just have to tell you, I love your voice. She said, thank you.